Imagine there's a magic button in Blender which you can click on which solves all your sculpting problems. Wouldn't this be cool? And the good news is there is something pretty similar to this. And for all the other sculpting problems which this feature can't solve, I show you some other solutions. So the main three things I'm referring to here is one bad geometry which is also called non-manifold which basically means geometry which causes problem while UV unwrapping, 3D printing, sculpting and so on. The second thing I want to talk about is Wong scaling because all of this can cause troubles for sculpting. And the last thing I want to talk about is flat geometry which is really hard to sculpt on. By the way, if you want to learn sculpting or improve your sculpting skills, then check out my latest video training, Mastering Sculpting. There I show you in over 60 videos with a total running time of about 12 hours everything I know about sculpting. Click on the link or in the video description to learn more about this product. So let's get to problem number one, bad geometry slash non-manifold. So while dynamic topology sculpting, it's very common that we are using Boolean operations like using the bool tools, which you can enable in the user preferences, to merge different objects together to create our base mesh, or later while sculpting to cut off things or just to add more geometry to our sculpting. And if then we have some problems in the mesh, this Boolean operations might not work correctly. So here we have a subdivided cube and it looks pretty clean, but if I tap into edit mode, I did a mistake here. I accidentally duplicated the whole thing in edit mode. That means I have two spheres lying exactly above each other. That means we have overlapping faces. And if I now place a new object here like a sphere, select both of those objects and then I use a pull tool and click on union to unify these objects, you can see that this will be cut off. So I just want to have one big object and not a big hole in this mesh. So you can see this causes some troubles. So the next bad geometry thing are holes in your mesh. This can happen from time to time. And if you are in sculpt mode and try to sculpt over this area or smooth this out, you can see it gets even worse. So we somehow have to fill these holes. Certainly you can go to edit mode and try to select this, press F or Alt F to fill this, but imagine you have a mesh with millions of polygons, then I don't recommend entering the edit mode because then it might happen that your computer crashes. So the next bad thing is Wong normals. So let's switch to edit mode and in the property panel under mesh display, we can enable the normals. And now we can see the normal direction, which basically means each face has a front and a back side. And for whatever reason, in this area, you, you can see it's shaded a bit differently. This normals or the front faces are showing inwards, not outwards like all the other things here. And this can also cause some troubles for boolean or sculpting. And if you have smooth shading enabled, it looks like this. Sometimes if all of your normals are wrong, then your mesh looks as darkish. So the easy way would be entering edit mode, pressing Ctrl N to solve this. But same thing here, if you have a sculpting with millions of polygons, it's not recommended to entering edit mode. So, and the fourth thing I wanna show you are inside faces. That means if I fly into this mesh, you can see we have one big face in the inside. That means on this one edge, three faces are connected. This one, this one, and the big one here. And this will definitely cause some troubles while sculpting. So I show you this. If I try to smooth this area or sculpt over this, this does not look good. So. How to easily solve these problems? I promised you there's a button which you can click on which solves all the problems. And yes, there is. And for this, you have to enable an add-on, go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and search for 3D Print Toolbox. Check this checkbox and click Save User Settings. And then in the tool shelf, you find this 3D Print Toolbox. And here we have this magic button called Make Money Fold. So you can see we have this big face in the inside 
And if I click this button here, it will remove this face basically, or all the overlapping faces we have here. Problem solved. Second one, wrong normals, make money fold, normals are recalculated. Then the holes, make money fold, holes are closed. And the last thing where this overlapping faces, and now let's click on make money fold and you can see that a lot of vertices, edges and faces are removed. And if I now boolean these two things together using the bool tool, this works just fine. So if I take a look in the inside, you can see both objects are now one big object. And in sculpt mode, it's now super easy to sculpt on that. So sometimes you have problems which are that worse that you can't solve them at all. And in this case, I recommend cut them off. So I quickly show you an example. I have one plane here. I merged this with Alt M and now I have this one edge. And if I add a skin modifier and you can see around this edge, there will be built this geometry. Then I can add a subsurf modifier to add some smoothness here. And if I now start to extrude, you can see I can create pretty cool shapes. With Control A, I can scale the selected dots. And in this way, I can easily create, for example, base meshes for my creatures. But if I overdo it and extrude many edges out of one vertex, you can see sometimes these weird errors are showing up. And yeah, if you're doing some complex skin modifier stuff and did not really realize that something like this happens, then it might be that you have some weird problems. So let's overdo it a bit. Then you're applying all the modifiers and go to sculpting and then you try, you see, oh my God, what's this? And you try to solve this. And even if I click on this make money fold button, this will not really solve my problem because this is already so bad. And in this case, I recommend to cut this off. So let's, for example, use the bool tool, click on this draw poly brush. Then we can draw a shape, press enter. Then this shape will be built. We can place this and in the modifiers, we can adjust the thickness. And then I select this shape, then this one here and click on difference. Then this will be cut off. And in the same way, I can also add geometry with whatever objects you like. You can also draw the poly brush here again. Enter places in here can also add a cylinder in this case, can also adjust this a bit and then select both of the objects and hit union. And now in sculpt mode, enable dynamic topology, control D. I check the resolution and now let's sculpt over this and smooth this area. And as you can see now, this is beautiful. And if you like, you still can press a make money fold button. It's always better to do this. So one last thing about bad geometry I wanna show you. For example, if you are sculpting on a 3D scan model, it might be that there's some tiny geometry flying around somewhere in the space, which is not really connected with the main object. And certainly you can press this make money fold button, but you can see this not solve the problem that we have this flying around shape. And there's another solution which quickly solved this. And for this, I use the remesh modifier. So I click on remesh. Under mode, I switch to smooth. So we have a bit smoothing in here. And with the octree depths, I can control the resolution. And for removing these separated pieces, this remove disconnected pieces checkbox is enabled by default, by the way. So after this, you can simply apply this. You can also see all the holes were closed. This is another way to close holes. And if now the geometry is too high resolution, you can add 
a DC made modifier for example and reduce the resolution and apply this and then go on with sculpting. Yeah, and this easy you can fix bad geometry which is bad for sculpting and bad for boolean operations and many other things. So let's get to problem number two, wrong scaling. And there are basically two different things I want to show you here. The first thing is non-uniform scale. So I'm inside object mode and scale this along the z-axis for example pretty much. And if I take a look into the properties panel, you can see the scaling value here is pretty high now. So it's not uniform according to the other two values here. And this scaling also not only affects the size of the object, this also affects modifier and the sculpting brushes. So, and now let's switch to edit mode and scale this back. And in this way, if I scale something in edit mode, I'm not really scaling the object, I just move vertices around. So if I go back to object mode, this looks like a sphere now, but the scaling is still at 21, as you can see. And if I now switch to sculpt mode, you also get a warning up here and start to sculpt on here, then some really weird things are going on. And if it ever happens that basically that your brush is behaving very strange, then check the scaling of your object. And the easy way to solve this is simply by pressing Ctrl A, but let's redo this first, Ctrl A, and apply the scaling. That means this new scaling will be applied to be the new default scaling of the object. That means the size of the object will stay the same but the scaling value will be reset as you can see. And if I now sculpt again, you can see this looks perfectly fine. So the second thing I want to show you here about wrong scaling is something that bugged me a long time because I applied all the tricks I already showed you in this video and nothing helped until I realized that the object is just too small. So if you're working with real life sizes and working on very tiny object, this can also cause some troubles. So for example, if I scale this way down and go to auto graphic view and apply the scale certainly, duplicate this, make this smaller, apply the scale. So and if I now select both of the objects and hit on union, you can see some weird things are going on. So this is not really unified as you can see. And this is because the objects are just too small. So and the easy way to fix this is to select both objects, press scale and scale it by, I don't know, 100 or 10, depending on how small your object is. So in this case I scale it by 10,000. Now I apply the scaling first, this is important, then I hit union. And as you can see now, inside sculpt mode, this worked perfectly fine. And after this, I can scale it back by 0 0.0001, something like this. Then my object is small again, apply the scaling, and then I have the real size again. So if this solution does not work and you have tried all the other things, scale the object even bigger and then try to unify them and then rescale it back to the original size and always apply the scaling. So the last thing I want to show you here is sculpting on flat areas. So for example, I have this object here and if I now sculpt on this, front faces only is enabled. That means I only can sculpt on the front faces, which is pretty useful in some cases. But if I now press control and remove some geometry, it can happen that this will overlap at some point. And sometimes it's really hard to fix this. And the easy way to fix this is simply by using the inflate deflate brush and simply draw over this area. You can see this area will be thickened in both directions. So the overlapping geometry will be pushed away from each other. And this is the quick and easy way to fix flat and thin areas. 
Yeah guys, that's it with this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things. Certainly, all the solutions I showed you in this video will not solve the problem that you have to learn and practice sculpting to create awesome artwork. If you need some help, check out my latest video training about sculpting in Blender. The link is in the video description. Also, check out weeklycgchallenge.com if you want to participate in a challenge, do some cool renderings and win some nice prizes. And if you want to follow my stuff, all my social media links you find in the video description. And you can also sign up to my newsletter, then you get my latest news directly to your inbox. Thanks for watching and we see us in the next video. Goodbye.